the weather. So to start off, how do we actually talk about the weather? Well, we can very simply say, how is the weather today? How is the weather today? What is the state of the weather? Or we can talk about it in the past. How was the weather during your holiday? Two things that us Brits love to talk about, the weather and holidays. These form the basis of our small talk. So you can use these subjects to talk to anyone in a formal, informal situation, um, to a stranger or to someone you know very well. Do you have any holidays booked? Hmm. How is the weather where you are? How was the weather during your last holiday? It's what we enjoy talking about. It's nice and simple. Now, you can ask somebody um, if they have nice weather. We often use the verb have. Do you own the weather? You own your weather. So, <laughs> do you have nice weather where you are? My mom lives in Anglesey in Wales and I often say to her on the phone, do you have nice weather where you are, mum? And she says, no, it's raining because it often is raining where she lives. And I say, oh, that's a shame. It's very sunny here and she gets very jealous. You can also, of course, talk about it in the past. Did you have warm weather last week? Did you have warm weather last week? Um... Okay, let me just have a quick look at some of your comments. Um, on or at or in holidays. So we'd usually say on your holiday. So we don't say at holiday or in holiday. We can use the preposition in if we're talking about the holidays as in a break from school. So it, like in a period of time. So we talk about the Christmas holidays or the winter holidays. Um, when everyone takes time off school, the studies and work sometimes, um, that's within a period of time. So the time that is the holidays. But in the UK, we also use holiday when we mean vacation. And that's that might be where you're confused. So in the summer holidays or in the Christmas holiday, I'm going on holiday. I'm going on vacation. So when we're talking about a vacation, we use the preposition on. <clears throat> I hope that's clear. Okay, so let's carry on. So do you have nice weather? Now, um, a verb I often use when talking about the weather is do. What is the weather doing at the moment? So perhaps I am lay in bed in the morning. Jacob has woken myself and my partner up. And I say to my partner, wouldn't it be nice to go for a picnic today with Jacob? What is the weather doing at the moment? I can't see out of the window. The curtains are closed. Can you have a look? What is the weather doing at the moment? Or, of course, um, you might use it for talking about the future. What is the weather going to do tomorrow? Can you check the weather forecast? or forecast. So that is um, another word that we often use when discussing weather is the forecast, the prediction. Um, often you'll have a three-day or a five-day forecast. Um, I often use the weather app on my iPhone and I think that gives you a 10-day forecast, a prediction 10 days in advance of what the weather will do. It's not always right, but we look at it anyway. So I could also use the word forecast and rather than saying what is the weather going to do, I could say what is the forecast for next Monday? Now you can, you can start this with weather, so what is the weather forecast? But everybody knows that a forecast is usually to do with weather, so it's often not needed. You can just say what's the forecast. Okay. So, I hope that's all clear. Does anybody have any questions so far? Um, okay, so most of you talking about the weather where you are. Um, lots of you having very hot weather today. Wonderful. Um, apart from Kichan, who has cold, rainy weather in Tokyo. I'm so sorry. Um, a little bit cold here in the city, says Andre. Very hot here in Iraq, says the smart. Um, 
Okay, a couple of questions that are off topic that I won't touch on right now just because it um, derails the lesson. Um, but you can save your questions till the end and if I have time, we'll go through some of them. Okay, so let's move on. So we've talked about how to ask questions regarding weather, but let's now look at some vocabulary. So one thing we're all interested in is the temperature. Some of us love the heat, some of us don't. I am not a big fan of hot weather, but I'm I'm not a fan of extreme weather. So I don't like very hot and I don't like very cold. I like to be cozy, warm. But how do we talk about temperature? Let's have a look. So temperature. Now, bear in mind how I'm pronouncing this. The middle is more like an I sound. Temperature, temperature, temperature. Okay. So temperature is me measured with a thermometer. A thermometer. I think I've put the American spelling there. I think in the UK it might be like this. Mm, oh, maybe not. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so temperature is measured with a thermometer. Now we do have, um, you will hear um, of degrees Celsius is the measurement of temperature, but you'll also hear in, in English Fahrenheit, um, degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. But that's purely um, American English as far as I know. We don't use Fahrenheit in the UK to measure temperature. We use degrees Celsius. Um, let me know in your country if you use one of these and which one you use. Um, over here we use degrees Celsius but we just say degrees. A, a weather forecast might use degrees Celsius or just Celsius but when talking to anyone, they'll just say degrees. So for example, um, today, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the temperature is, but I guess it's around 19 degrees. So I won't say degrees Celsius, I'll just say it's 19 degrees. So please tell me how, um, what is the temperature where you are? What is the temperature where you are? Or I might say, how, how hot is it where you are? Assuming it's hot. Now, if it's not hot, then it will be cold. And if it goes below zero, zero is the point of freezing. Um, so we might say below freezing or below zero. So below zero or below freezing. Um, anything below that, we use minus. So here we go. Anything below zero, known as freezing, is a minus temperature. We say minus before the numbers when talking about temperature below zero. So it's two degrees, but it feels like minus 10. And what we tend to do is then drop the word degrees if we're talking about minus. So here I've said it's 25, it was 25 degrees yesterday. But if I was to repeat that for the minus, if it was freezing, um, it was minus 25 and I would lose the word degrees. It was minus 25 yesterday. And this is how natives talk. So this is what we would do when talking about temperature. It was minus 25 yesterday. So I'd like you to tell me what is the temperature? where you are. Let's have a look. So in, um, I've got my patrons here. Let's just bring you guys up. Hi, Francesca. And the weather is sunny in Malta. You said it works perfectly. Oh, great. You're talking about the live stream. I'm glad it's working now. We use degrees and say degrees. Good. Here in Malta, it's, so here in Malta is, I'd say it is. Here in Malta, it is 34 degrees or just use the contraction it's. Here in Malta, it's 34 degrees. Wow, that is very hot. Um, okay, Masumi, we've got, hi, Andreas. You're saying hello to one of the other members. Great, okay, let's have a look what you guys are saying on the YouTube chat room. Um, in Vietnam, it's 37 degrees Celsius. Whew, okay, um, ah, that's interesting. For anything below zero, Ma Masri has suggested that we could use the word sub-zero. Yes, if we're talking in general about temperatures that have fallen below zero, we could say um, Iceland sees many days of sub-zero temperatures. Okay, so if we're talking in general about temperatures below zero, 
we can use sub-zero temperatures. Um, uh, Hamza says here, here it is, you must use it is, here it is 30 degrees. So the temperature is the state, so we use it is, the temperature it is, okay, or the temperature is. But if you're not using the word temperature, here it is, okay. In India, it is, make sure we use that, it is 38 degrees, oh, hot. Here it is around 18 degrees, says Anka, very good. Um, here it is so hot because I have an exam. Oh, well, I don't think it's hot because you have an exam, um, but it's hot and I have an exam. Whew. Well, good luck with your exam. I hope the heat doesn't put you off. Okay, so let's have, um, let's have a look at the rest of the notes. Let's move on. So here are some words that we might use when talking about temperature in general. First thing we have the word mild. Now, mild is when it's just a little warmer than average. And we often use this when, when you can maybe take off your scarf and your hat and your gloves. So it's not warm, but it's not cold. It's just mild. It's quite nice. It's fresh. Oh, there's another word you might use. Fresh. Okay, so I'd say fresh is actually probably more on the cold side and mild is more on the warm side. But often here in the UK, we have very mild temperatures. We have mild days. So it might be like 16 degrees, 17 degrees. Quite nice, pleasant, mild. Um, then of course, when the temperatures rise and we hit maybe 20, 21, 22 degrees, you could say it's quite warm. It's a nice warm day. And then any, any higher than that, we're going to say it's hot. Now, I feel the heat. <laughs> so anything for me above 27 degrees and it's hot for me. Now, there are a few different ways of talking about heat. And you might hear people saying it's boiling hot or it's roasting hot as if it's been in an oven to roast or boiling as if it's a pan of water that's been brought up to boiling point. Or you could say it's sweltering hot, sweltering hot. Now, all of these can be used without the word hot. So I could very simply say, it is boiling today, or it's roasting outside, <sighs> don't go out. Or I can't cope, it's just sweltering. Okay, or I'm sweltering in this sweltering heat. You could talk about the sweltering heat. Okay, so those are some more descriptive words that you might use when discussing the warmer weather. Now, another word that you might hear on a weather report is, oh, today is going to be a scorcher. A scorcher. If, if um, something gets slightly burnt, we talk about it being scorched. So perhaps if your coat gets too close to an open fire, it might slightly burn and that's scorched. And so sometimes we would refer to a very hot day as a scorcher or it's scorching hot. So it's so hot, it's burning me. Yeah, scorching hot. Okay, a couple of you are using these words and you're saying, I feel it is boiling hot now in Bangladesh. Wonderful, great. Um... Melting, that's another word that's just been suggested as well. Really great word, it's me I'm melting. It's melting hot outside. Okay, so anything that kind of describes what heat does, it boils, it roasts, um, it scorches, it swelters. Yeah, we can use it. Um, another word that's been suggested is muggy. Now muggy, that's an interesting one. Muggy, I think the actual definition of muggy is when when, it's, when there's no kind of fresh air at all, it's like, let me have a look at a definition because I, I'm finding it hard to explain. Muggy meaning, it's unple humid, that's the word I'm looking for, humid. When it's kind of wet and uncomfortable heat and you can't breathe, you know, it's that unpleasant, unpleasantly warm. So it's muggy, it's a great word, I'm gonna add that. Um, let me add this to the notes, muggy and humid. Um, humid, um, we use humid when it's kind of warm, wet heat. 
Um, so you'll have a lot of humidity in the rainforest, for example. Uh, okay, fantastic. Thank you for those suggestions, guys. Keep them coming. Okay, so Francesca on the Skype group says, I wouldn't go out today. Uh, it's sweltering. It's hard to breathe. Um, I think we need an E on the end of that one, Francesca. Breathe. That's the verb, uh, to breathe. And what you've written there is breath, which is the noun. I take a breath. Okay. And the Japanese summer is too humid. Wonderful. Good sentence there. Okay. Fantastic. So hopefully that's all clear so far. Um, what, what about if it's a cool or a cold day? So we could obviously use the word cool. I'm going to repeat the word fresh here because fresh is more to do with the cold rather than the warmth. So perhaps if it's been a very, very hot summer, suddenly the temperatures drop to 17 degrees. You go outside, there's a cold breeze, a wind in your face. You go, oh, it's very fresh today. Just feels refreshing because the air is fresh and it's a bit crisper, a bit cooler. Okay, so we could say cool, of course, and that's when it's not too cold. You can probably get away with just putting a cardigan on to go out. But then we have cold and then you would probably need a coat. Any colder than that, we're probably going to say freezing. It's freezing outside. Absolutely freezing. Oh, my light's going to go again. Um, all my equipment is just falling down today. But you can't see me. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so some other words we might use if it is cold. If it's very cold, it's so cold that it's creating ice, then we'll say it's icy. Um, another word we use actually is bitter. We say it's bitter. It's bitterly cold. Bitterly cold or just bitter. Just going to add those in. Um, bitterly cold. It's bitterly cold outside. Um or you could say it's ice cold, but often we would just use the word ice or icy if there actually is frozen, if there's ice on the ground or the leaves are frozen, the grass is frozen. Um, some other words you could use if it's mild, if it's cool, not too cold. You could say it's chilly. It's a bit chilly. I often say that in the evenings, once the sun's gone down and the temperature drops, I'll often shiver and go, oh, it's a bit chilly this evening. Um, nippy is another one I quite like. Oh, it's a bit nippy. Um, brisk is another one that's quite nice. It's, there's, a, there's a brisk, there's a briskness to the air. <laughs> it's a bit brisk. It's meaning it's just a bit cold, a bit cold. Okay, so a period of cold weather can be referred to as a cold snap or a cold spell. So if it's been, um, like recently, for example, um, this time last year, we had a heat wave, which is a length of time where it's above average temperature. So it's warm for a long period, maybe a week or two weeks or longer. This time last year, we were having a horrendous heat wave. But this year, we've had a bit of a cold snap. So it's been uncharacteristically cold for this time of year. It's been uncharacteristically cold. So uncharacteristically means it's out of character. It's not normal. Uncharacteristically cold. Okay. So, um, so we have a cold snap or a cold spell. Okay. Moving on to what you see when you look up to the sky. Hopefully you will look up to the sky on a day when you're outside and you'd have clear blue skies. We could often say there's not a cloud in the sky or there's um, not a cloud in sight. So if the weather, if the skies are completely blue, then they are clear. They are clear. Okay. Um, the opposite to clear skies is overcast. Oh, I've made a typo there overcast or cloudy. So today, this morning, we had clear skies. There was not a cloud in the sky. However, now it is overcast. 
um, yeah, it's just complete covering. So overcast generally means when the clouds completely cover the sky. If there are patches, you can see bits of blue um, and bits of cloud, then you could say it's cloudy. It's a bit cloudy. It's partially cloudy. It's very cloudy or it's overcast. It's a full covering. Okay. All right. Um, one of you said biting cold. Yes, we could use biting. Ooh. Yes. And something that we do when it's really cold is we shiver and our teeth chatter, which is probably um, something you haven't heard before. Chattering teeth. When your teeth do that because it's so cold, you can't stop shaking, shivering your jaw. So chattering teeth might be a new word for you. Okay. So um, let's talk about the sun. We all love the sun. The sun gives us life. Um, it gives us warmth. It gives us light. And um, yes, I love the sun as long as it's not too warm. Um, the sun, when we're talking about it, it goes up and it goes, it comes up. It, oh, here we go. Another typo. It comes up and it goes down. So you might talk about the sunrise saying the sun comes up at around five o'clock in the morning and it goes down around 7 p.m. in the evening. Um, but the sun can also, during the day, come out and go in. So the sun might rise at 5 a.m., but you may not see the sun until two o'clock in the afternoon. So you could say, finally, the sun has come out. Or you could say, I was going to have a picnic, but the sun's gone in. Oh, that's no good. So a couple of sentences I've written here is, I hope the sun will come out this afternoon. And unfortunately, the sun is hiding behind the clouds, which is something we often say. The sun is hiding behind the clouds. Um, one of you has written, the sun has got his hat on, hip, 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 hooray. Yes, it's a fun song, a very fun song. Okay, so if we're talking about sunny weather, then that's a word you may use. It's a sunny day. It is very sunny today. Um, we talk about the sunshine. We are hoping for blue skies and sunshine this weekend. Um, the sun's rays can be quite damaging to our skin. These are called UV rays, which stands for ultraviolet rays. Um, we have to wear sunscreen, although we often call it sun cream. We just say sun cream. Um, but you should wear sunscreen or sunscreen to protect ourselves. So you'll often hear um, a weather report include the UV ratings um, or the UV levels. Uh, so they might say, make sure you cover up today. UV rays, UV levels are very high. Um, so that's something to be aware of. UV rays. Okay. So um, let me just have a quick look if there are any questions that I want to quickly catch. Um, what's the difference between weather and climate? Hmm. I think oh, that's a very interesting question, actually, because weather can, weather can be in general or weather can be very localized what is the weather um, or weather can describe conditions across the world um, climate although climate although it obviously is about weather I feel the sense of it for me is that it's more about general temperature and general conditions you can expect so for example I might say to my friend one day I'm going to move to a warmer climate, meaning I'm sick of the general um, cold, mild weather in the UK. I want to go somewhere where it's generally hot, where it has a warm climate. So um, compared to the UK, Italy has a warmer climate or Barbados has a much warmer climate. Um, or you might say, I can't stand this weather. I'm going to move to colder climates, somewhere with a colder climate. And so it, it talks about what you can generally expect of the weather um, within a certain place, whereas weather describes any type of weather event. Does that make sense? Does that help? I hope so. Um, okay, so any other questions I can see? What to say? Um, a cloudy weather in one word, just overcast. Overcast, when it's just cloudy. Or you could say cloudy. 
um any more do 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 Okay, let me carry on for you. So next we want to talk about wind. Um, now, wind always makes me giggle because, um, on I mean, it's very silly. I'm being very childish. Wind um, from a person is um, gas. So in the UK, we refer to gas as wind. So if you fart, or another word for it is trump, which is another funny thing, um, we call it wind. You say, oh, I've got terrible wind. Oh, t- dear me, terrible wind. Um, or if you if you burp, then you've got you've got gas, you've got wind. So um, whenever I talk about wind, when you say, "Oh, I've got a bit of wind here over in London," then it's quite funny because it could be a pun, saying like you've got wind. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, <laughs> so wind, you might say it is windy, and actually we have had windy weather here recently. Now, if it's a gentle wind, then you might say breezy. It's a bit breezy. There's a gentle breeze or a nice warm breeze. Breeze tends to be quite a positive word. Often on a sunny day, you like to have a nice cool breeze to take the edge off the heat. Okay? Of course, the wind blows. So we talk about the wind blowing. Um, The amount is described as either light or strong. So we have a gentle wind would be a light wind um, or a a light breeze or sorry, a little breeze. Um, And a strong wind might blow your hat off. Now, a very strong wind could be described as a gale, a gale. Um, So here are just a few different phrases you might hear around wind. You might hear a gust of wind and that's when wind just suddenly blows. So it's one blow of wind. So imagine you're just just stood in the park and then suddenly all the leaves blow up because there was a sudden gust of wind. Okay, a gust of wind. Um, Similar to a gust, you might talk about a blast of wind. blast. Um, A blast is normally like a hit. So uh, a car, if you're in a car crash, they might talk about um, the blast um, destroyed the side of the car um, or an explosive blast. Um, So you can have a blast, but we often say blast when talking about cold air. So you'll hear this phrase, a blast of cold air. And then we might talk about a draft, and this has a strange spelling, so be mindful of this spelling. A draft. Draft. It sounds like an F. And yeah, it's got a long R vowel, so this just doesn't help you. The spelling doesn't help you at all. I'm sorry. I apologize for the English language. It's so confusing. But this should sound like this. And actually, I mean... Yeah, it's exactly the same as that, which is another word and means other things. So the spelling, when it's spelled like this, when it's spelled like this, is um, where air is escaping. So perhaps here we have a very old front door and it lets air pass through even when the door is closed. So sometimes in the winter you get a cold blast of air coming in around the front door and that is a draught. So it's where air seeps through. So you might say, oh, close that window, I'm getting a draft. Or I've got a stiff neck, I've been sitting in a draft all day. Okay, a draft. I think I've said that enough times now. (laughs) Okay, so um, um, one of you is asking, can you watch this live lesson later? Yes, this will stay on YouTube as a replay, which you can watch whenever you like. Um, Okay, so the last phrase we have for wind here is it's blowing a gale. It's blowing a gale. So if it's very, very windy, you might come in and go, it's blowing a gale outside. It's blowing a gale. All right, just a quick jump over to my patrons. Hi, you're saying I don't like windy weather because the wind blows my hair. Is that correct? Yes, but I would finish the sentence off. Um, um, The wind blows my hair um all over the place or the wind blows my hair about so we want to make it sound like the wind makes a mess of your hair it works perfectly well what you've written 
but just the wind blowing my hair doesn't really tell us what the problem is. The wind blows my hair out of place might be a good way to say it. The wind blows my hair out of place or the wind blows my hair about would make it sound like it's become messy because of the wind. I hope that makes sense. Okay, hopefully that's all clear. Let's move on to rain. Hmm, something we have a lot of here in the UK, which is why we have a very green country. Lots of water and lots of mild weather. So, um, um, Amel's asking, are draft, sorry, draft and drought homophones? No, let me just, let me just, um, let me just put these down here so you can all see what she's written here because these words are confusing. So these words here, draft, drought. So they sound like draft and drought, like that, draft and drought. Okay, they're not homophones. Okay, all right, back to the notes. Here we are, rain. So you must carry an umbrella, umbrella, or a raincoat if there is a chance of rain. An umbrella, if you're not familiar with this word, is the rain cover thing that you open up and it covers you and usually it blows inside out. That always happens to me. I don't own an umbrella because every time I buy an umbrella, first time I use it, it breaks. So I give up. I just get wet. It's fine. Um, okay. So um, you must carry an umbrella or a raincoat if there is a chance of rain. We, we'd often say it's raining. That's what you hear from many Brits most of the time. What's the weather doing? It's raining. Okay. Um, or you could say it's rainy. Not as common, but it, you can use it. It's not weird to use it. It's just not as common. So you say it's rainy. It's a bit rainy. Um, so rain starts and stops and it all also comes down. So these are words you use when talking about rain. You say it started to rain or it has stopped raining um, or the rain is coming down. Now, the different levels of rain are described, Anna, more typos, dear me, are described as a weight, heavy or light, heavy or light. So you could say it is raining very heavily at the moment. However, we also have different words to describe different types of rain. So here are a few. Light rain could be described as spitting. Now, this is an interesting one. I was having a think about this. We never say spit. Um, there's a bit of spit outside because spit is saliva that you expel. So you, that's to spit. So if you say there's spit outside, it sounds like someone's gone outside and spat on the patio. Okay, but we do say in the continuous, it is spitting. The same as I would say, oh, look at that young man there. He stood there spitting on my patio. T -t -t. Okay, we say the rain is spitting. It's spitting, but we never say it's spit. There's spit outside. Okay, just in the continuous, it is spitting or it was spitting yesterday. Okay, um, coming back to the word umbrella. Um, Iva has made a good point. We can also call it a brolly for short. A brolly. B-R-O-L-L-Y. A brolly. We often say that. Um, I forgot my brolly. It's nice and easy. Easier than umbrella. Okay. Um, so another word for light rain could be drizzle. Now drizzle tends to be the kind of light rain that really gets you wet. It's like when there's lots of rain, but it's very light, it's very fine, but there's lots of it. And so you go outside for a few minutes in drizzle and you come in and you're soaking wet through. That's, that's more what drizzle is. Spitting is kind of um, very light and not very much of it. Okay, so if the rain drops are quite large, now a rain drop is an individual bit of rain, a bit of water, a drop of water 
that makes up rain. Um, the large raindrops we often um, refer to as fat rain. So it's very fat rain today. <laughs> um, I went outside. It's not very heavy rain, but it's very fat rain. Um, the word raindrops has actually made me think about whether rain is singular or plural. And this is something that I looked into this morning because I often hear students making the mistake of adding an S to rain. Um, and it's, it's a difficult one because you do have a plural version of rain. You can say, um, when the rains, when the rains come to the desert, Rains in plural is talking about lots of rainstorms. So lots of events of rain happening over one place. Um, when we talk about rain, we're often just talking about the weather conditions in one place. So in that case, we never need to add an S onto the end when discussing it, unless we're talking about the action. Okay, so it rains in Spain on Tuesdays. Um, but you wouldn't say, um, I can't think of an example that's wrong. Um, I don't like rains. You wouldn't say I don't like rains because it is by nature plural. It means all the raindrops. Okay. So just something to bear in mind. Generally just talk about the rain and you, you won't go far wrong. Um, back to the notes. We have a quick rainstorm will be referred to as a shower a shower and you'll often hear on weather reports them talking about heavy showers you can expect heavy showers or they might also say um, a few light showers a few light showers in the east okay um, all right so there are many fun ways to describe rain and one you will all know is the idiom it's raining cats and dogs unfortunately though you won't hear that expression often. So I do hear lots of teachers teaching this phrase. I've also taught this phrase, but I don't often hear natives using it. We all know what it means, so you can use it, but it's not very common. So if you want to sound like a native, I wouldn't use this very often. Instead, you might hear, or you may hear one of the following. It's pouring down. Now, all of these phrases refer to very heavy rain. Okay, so when you've got a heavy shower, you could say it's pouring down outside, absolutely pouring down. Obviously to pour is if I took this glass of water and tipped it, that would pour. And so if it's pouring down, it means it's like lots and lots of water. Um, it's pelting down is another one, it's pelting down. Um, I feel like the word pelt, I'm not certain, but I feel like the word pelt means to hit or to beat. So if something's pelting, although you might say pelting sometimes when talking about running as well. So it could mean fast or it could mean heavy. It's pelting down. Um, we could also say it's tipping down, very similar to pour, to tip. Um, it's teeming down. I don't hear that one as often. It's beating down. So the rain is hitting down very heavily. Similar to beat is to lash. If you lash, you normally lash with a whip. So um, it's lashing down, means it's like hitting the ground like a whip. Um, it's sheeting down. Now be careful with this one. You have to keep that vowel in the middle, long E, sheeting down. Otherwise, if you have a short vowel, it will sound like you're saying a bad word. And that's not what you want. So it's sheeting down, like as if the water was coming down like a waterfall. You see a sheet of water. It's sheeting down. Maybe just don't use that one. It's, it's too risky. Um, you could say it's coming down in torrents. It's coming down in torrents. So in big amounts. Or one I quite like is it's bucketing. Bucketing it down. So imagine you've got a bucket of water. You've tipped the bucket of water. It's bucketing down. Okay, whew, that's a lot of phrases. But just choose one that you like and stick with that one. And be aware that if anyone's talking about rain and they say something similar to this with the word down, you know they're talking about heavy rain. 
okay? Sometimes if it rains heavily, all of a sudden, so if it comes out of nowhere, sunny, 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 then rain really heavy, you might say, wow, the heavens have opened up. The heavens have opened up. Oh, have I spelled that wrong? Is it supposed to be like that? No. Okay, my dyslexic eyes can't tell. Um, the heavens have opened up. I don't know why they use this one, but um, but yeah, I hear that one a lot. Um, Constantine has made a suggestion of it's pissing it down. Um, that's a swear word. Um, and it's quite a crass one. It means to piss. P-I-S-S is to wee. It's a crass word for weeing. Um, so it's imagining someone is weeing down. Yes. So we can use that. People do use it a lot and it's not such a bad word. I would not have a problem with using it in my day-to-day life with people that I know. I say, oh, it's pissing it down outside. I just don't like to say it on the videos because YouTube gets upset and these videos get buried, which is not fun. So, um, yes, you're right. Thank you for making that suggestion. Okay. Ah, oh, here's a fun, fun little one. Rainwater that gathers on the ground is called a puddle. So rainwater that gathers on the ground is called a puddle. Who likes to jump in puddles? <laughs> Mostly children. But um, but yes, puddles. You have to avoid the puddles. So a word that you may not have been familiar with. That's quite important. Let's just make that bold. So remember that one. Okay, sometimes during or after a light shower, you may see, if you're lucky, a rainbow. And a rainbow is the arc of colors, of refracted light that you see in the sky. Red, yellow, hang on, what's the, what's the rhyme? I can't even remember the rainbow rhyme. I can't remember the colors, but it's like red and green and blue and Whoa, da, 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 orange and purple and green. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Not really. <laughs> Didn't remember the words. That doesn't help. Okay, let's move on to those colder weathers. And um, we're going to see some snow. Of course, snow and ice. So often, if it's going to be, um, if there's going to be ice, if it's going to fall below zero, then the weatherman... And we'll talk about icy conditions. They'll say, take care if you're driving today. There's lots of icy conditions on the road. And they may talk about sheet ice, which is a very thin layer, a big stretch or thin layer of ice that you often have on roads where the water is quickly frozen and caused it to be like an ice rink and the cars go sliding all over the place. Okay, so... um, We also have sleet. Sleet is kind of like wet snow. So it's where rain contains a little bit of ice, but it's not quite cold enough to stay icy. So it's wet snow. Then we have hail, or sometimes this is known as um, hailstone. But we often say, oh, it's hailing outside. Um, So this is where raindrops has turned to hard ice. I remember once being in, I was in France, I went on a surfing holiday and I was camping and I was outside and suddenly it started hailstoning or hailing. And honestly, the hailstones were like that big. They were huge. They were making dents in the top of people's cars and setting off car alarms. And it hurt the skin. It was coming down so hard, it really hurt my skin. So I had to hide underneath a tree until it stopped for long enough for me to get back to my tent. Yes, I'm not a fan of hailstone. Um, And then we have what's called slush, or um, you could say it is slushy. And slush is where snow has turned um, or started to turn back to water. So where the snow is starting to melt, it becomes slush. Before it's completely water, it's slush, it's nasty. Um, usually it gets very dirty and mixes in with the soil and things. And then we've got the word frost. So there, there is a frost or, oh, what have I done? Or it is frosty. It is frosty. And this is where it's cold enough that things ice over. So I might look into my garden and see that my flowers, my leaves are all frosty. And that frost is probably going to kill them. But 
hopefully that's not going to happen because I've got some beautiful flowers that I've put out this year, which I'm very proud of. They're all blooming now, so no frost, not at this time of year. Okay, so if we have got snow, actual snow, then we'd say it is snowy or it is snowing. And one question many people ask is, will the snow stick? Will the snow, snow stick? And this means, will it stay frozen when it touches the ground? So I could say it snowed this morning, but it didn't stick. So it just melted when it hit the ground. So it snowed, but there's no snow to play with. Um, Danish is asking when the lesson will end. I don't know um, how much more. We've got not much more on the, on the notes, so not much longer. But you can always go away and come back later if you have to leave. Okay. So then we have the word snowstorm. I guess if you have a sudden um, downfall of snow, you could say, oh, it's a little snowstorm. If it's very heavy snow, then you'd call this a blizzard. It's very hard to go out and walk in a blizzard. It's hard to see. It's hard to move fast. Um, a blizzard, it can be quite dangerous. Very cold temperatures. A light bit of snow would be called a flurry. So there's a little flurry, although I don't hear this that often, but that's what that word means. Okay, let's move on to extreme weather. Now, I'm sure I've missed off a few here, so do feel free to add to this list. But we have lightning. Now, often we talk about thunder and lightning, and in that order as well, thunder and lightning, thunder and lightning. But lightning is the dramatic flash an electrical discharge which, which appears from the clouds and sometimes touches the earth. Okay, lightning. Um, and then we have obviously thunder. When you have thunder and lightning, people often talk about a thunderstorm. So a thunderstorm generally describes thunder and lightning um, and the general storm that goes with it. But thunder specifically describes that loud noise, the rumble that's heard after lightning appears. And often you can tell how close the storm is by the distance between the lightning and then the thunder. So you'll have the lightning and if it's straight away you hear thunder, then you know the, the storm is very close. It's very close overhead. Next we have a flood. Um, we do experience floods here in this country quite often, more and more so these days than we ever used to. And a flood is where the water level rises, usually because of too much rainfall. And so you might say, um, my garden is flooded, um, or the river has burst its banks and the street is flooding. So if something bursts its banks, bursts its banks, a river or a stream would burst its banks. It's when it goes beyond the um, outer edges of the river, what holds the river in place. If it goes over that, then it's burst its banks. Um, we have a drought. Now remember, it's a very different word to draft. A draft is the little um, escaping air that's chilly normally. And a drought is when there's been no water for a long time, no rainfall for a long time. So much so the ground dries, everyone runs out of water and it becomes a dangerous situation, a drought. Then we have a tornado or a cyclone. Um, these are spinning wind storms, spinning wind storms. Some people talk about smog. Um, we had a terrible smog here before I was born um, in, in the time of Winston Churchill one very famous one. But generally, we don't have too much of a smog to worry about. But I know in some more built up cities around the world, smog is a real problem. And it's where pollution creates like a dark cloud at ground level. So everyone's breathing in this kind of cloud, this, this pollution. Um, you have an avalanche, which is where snow unexpectedly slides down a mountain. So when you're away skiing, it can be quite dangerous if you go off piste, if you go off the normal track, you have to be careful of an, having um, avalanches, being caught up in an avalanche. Um, hurricanes. So a hurricane is a tropical storm which has very strong wind. When I think about a hurricane, I often just think about the strong wind element, but it also has heavy rain as well. Um, 
heat wave is what we discussed earlier is when you have a long period of hot weather. Then we have two more here, fog and foggy. So fog is like a thick, low-level cloud. It's not pollution. It's just water-based. Um, it's just very low. So it often is difficult to drive when it's foggy because you can't see very far ahead of you. So it becomes very dangerous. So fog and it, it is foggy. And then, of course, um, there is a monsoon, which is like a season of heavy rain. Um, we don't have monsoons here. Um, tornado and cyclone, um, are they synonyms? Lolly, lolly. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think so. I don't know what the difference is. I wonder if one is over the seas and one is over land. If anybody knows, then I'd love to, I'd love to find out. Okay, um, so please do add your comments down below because we're all learning. Um, okay, fantastic. So, are you sitting on the floor? You're asking if I'm sitting on the floor. No, I'm sitting on a chair. This is my desk, I'm sitting on a chair. Um, <coughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. That has brought me to the end of those notes. I hope you found that helpful. If it, if it is helpful, then please do give it a thumb up. Share it with anyone that you think would find it helpful. And please make sure you're subscribed. I don't always know when I'm able to be live or when new videos are coming out. I can't always announce it in advance because of my baby. And so um, if you are subscribed and you've turned on notifications, you'll always get an idea of when videos come out and you won't miss anything. So please do make sure you've done that. Um, if you're interested in improving your pronunciation, then join me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is British English Pro. British English Pro. So I'd love to have you there. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. Patrons and VIPs, I'm going to put the notes um, probably into the Skype room is probably the best place for me to share those. Um, thank you so much again for joining me, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Take care and have a lovely Sunday. Mwah! Lots of love from London.